Let's go over HTML structure. So what you're seeing here on this slide is everything that Glitch is going to give you automatically just from starting up a new instance or a new web page. So when we hit that hello web page button, you're going to get all of this right here where you see all visible content. You'll see some filler information there. We'll see how it looks like in Glitch later on in this lesson. But for now, um, I'm putting all visible content there because that's Kind of conceptually what you'll be having in that area but when you open up glitch you'll see hi this is your new web page from glitch maybe a p tag i forget what it is but we're going to usually just get into the habit of deleting that all together but there, all this other stuff is going to stay and i just want to point out what it looks like when it's all said and done and throughout this lesson over the next few slides we'll be going through what each one of these items does but as a quick overview let's just take a look so we see a lot of code it can be very intimidating when you see it for the first time but right away, this kind of stands out or doesn't stand out because it's kind of, uh, it's a little grayed out. This is the doc type HTML. It's important for each one of your HTML documents to have this. It tells the computer right off the bat, this is an HTML document. Followed by the HTML tag, which as you can see, wraps around everything. So it's, it's kind of like a regular content tag, but uh, for the back end of the HTML, it tells all the code inside that every code, every piece of code in here is part of the HTML tag. Kind of, you got to think about it like it's in the background, right? The reason that all this comes right out of the box with Glitch is because you don't really have to think about it. Like, of course, what you're going to write is HTML code and it has to be wrapped inside of HTML tag. So it kind of does it for you. But just so you know, this is how it starts. It starts off as blank. You, you declare your HTML file, you save it as an HTML file, and then you write an HTML tag and put your HTML code inside of it. So it's a little redundant, but you can start to see that the uh, parent-child relationship is already starting even before we write any code or any code that we can see. Right afterwards, we have the head tag and it cuts off here. The head tag is everything that's important for your website that is asset-based. So it's bringing in the CSS from wherever your CSS file is, right? Here's the path, the root. So it's directly on the root and there's the name of the file. Same thing with the script, with the JavaScript. They have their own tags that, that let you bring them in. For the script one, it's used specifically for JavaScript or different kinds of JavaScript files. Sometimes you have more than one. And then the link tag can be for a couple of different things. But in this case, we're using it for its most basic purpose, bringing in the CSS. Our title tag is just what shows up in the tab. It's important for SEO and all this kind of stuff. Just It's kind of like the trunk of the cars where you keep your, your different tools like <laughs> I don't drive, but uh, your wrenches and your jack and, and, and your groceries, pretty much everything that's kind of important, but you're just storing. Then we get to the body tag, which we have talked about a little bit indirectly, but it's everything that is visible on the page. And then you can start writing the text or the code or the HTML content that we're accustomed to. It all actually goes inside of this body. So all this time that we've been in CodePen, we've been inside of the body of our HTML document, but we're going to start writing it explicitly. Or when it comes with Glitch, we're going to start putting our code in there explicitly. So that's the classic HTML structure. All of this comes with Glitch. When you start up a new Glitch project, you'll see this minus this which you'll have, to, um, you'll have to erase what's there currently. I have a couple templates for you where it's already erased, but if you start a new one on your own, just know that that's going to be there. But uh, let's go through each one of these. I'm going to take you on a journey through each one of these boilerplate tags, followed by a little bit of some semantic HTML. And we'll cut this off here, and let's get into the lessons.